The first thing which I would want to highlight is that why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala settle them in the desert? Now, after giving them freedom, Allah could have very well, it was very much possible for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they could have been settled in a rural or an urban population also. So why were they settled in a desert and why was a desert chosen for the settlement of people of Bani Israel? You know what? The people of Bani Israel, after being freed from the clutches of the Pharaoh and the Kiptis, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had now chosen them to be the followers of Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. They were now chosen as followers of Musa alayhi salam, as helpers, as supporters of Musa alayhi salam to help him in the implementation of Islam. So they were now, they were now expected to teach, to preach, to spread, to protect, and to implement the teachings of Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, that is the teachings of Islam. So they were picked out and they were chosen for this pious deed. And we also know that people who, who are the settlers of the desert, they are tough, they are hardy, they are resilient, they are used to a simple life and they are closer to nature. And because of their being close to nature, they, they very readily accept the teachings of Islam as Islam is a nature, is a religion of nature. So to facilitate their mission, facilitate the mission which they were going to be handed over, the mission of the teaching and the preaching and the protection and the implementation of Islam, this mission was going to be handed over to them. They were they were settled in the desert so that they, they became tough, they became hardy, they became strong, they became resilient, they became close to nature, and they became used to a simple manner of life. But once they were settled in the desert, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped them and supported them and blessed them. Blessed them with what? In the desert, the main issue is of the scorching sun and the heat and the unbearably high temperature. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered and there used to be a cloud, a cloud which used to stay in the sky above their settlement and they had shade and there was coolness and they were prevented and they were protected from the scorching sun and the heat of the unbearable heat of the desert so that they were comfortable. And then in the desert, since there is no agriculture, there's no trees, there's no plantation. So food and gathering food becomes an issue. So there Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the desert, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said what? Wa anzalna alaykumul manna wa salwa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them man and salwa. Man was what? Man was a liquid which used to fall from the sky at night like the dew drops. And they used to use it as what? They used to fill it in containers and uh, then they used to drink it as a very delicious and a very energizing fluid. So it was a delicious energy drink. That is one purpose this man fulfilled. And secondly, we learn that this man as dew drops, it used to fall at night and wherever it used to fall, these drops used to settle down and the drops used to dry. And when these drops used to dry, they used to make small round granules and they used to collect them and they used to grind them and they used to use these grinded granules of man as flour. And they used to use it as a staple food, you know. And uh, salva was like, small little birds, very tiny little birds used to come in flocks. And this used to provide energy and protein and a very delicious source of food for them. Now, the question now arises is, 
that why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provide them with man and salwa? Number one, to set them free from the hassle of earning. To set them free from the hardships of earning and fending and fetching and providing because they had a bigger, they had been assigned a very big mission in their life. They had been given and assigned a very high target in their life. So they could only implant, implement Islam if they were freed from all these hassles. So remember, the lesson learned is what? People who want to plan to work for preaching and teaching and implementation of Islam, they would need to leave these worldly commitments and hassles to some extent. Too many worldly involvements and too many worldly commitments and hassles, that will, that will make dawa and preaching and teaching and spreading the words of Allah, it will make that mission slightly difficult. And next, we also need to understand why always, why always man and salwa? Allah could have given them wearable foods. Allah could have given them wearable dishes. Allah the Razik could have provided them with sometimes pigeons and sometimes one bird and sometimes the other bird meat and sometimes anything else. Wearable foods could have been provided as well. By what, why, why only one option always and always? You know why? To train the team, to train the team with the mission of teaching and preaching simplicity of meal, to get them used to simple, easy, convenient eating habits, simple and easy, convenient meals. Remember, all those who indulge in complicated and variable eating habits it takes up a lot of time and a lot of money and a lot of efforts. You know, there are two types of people, people who just eat to live. So this category of people who are just eating to live, who eat to gain energy, to keep themselves going, you just eat for this purpose. And then there are people who just live to eat. The only purpose of living is they want to eat, they want to enjoy. They want to enjoy food and meals. They just live to eat. If the state of affairs is living to eat, then such people will fail to achieve high targets and high missions and goals in life. But for all those, for all those whose life is eating, eating and eating, all the time, all the energy and money will be used up for eating. And there will be very less of money and energy and time left for bigger achievements in life, for bigger goals like teaching and preaching of life, of Quran and implementation of Quran, no time and no money and energy would be left. All the time and money and energy will be spent on cooking and baking and preparing and laying down and discussing and learning and collecting just food. So remember, if we want to have higher ambitions, higher targets, we need to simplify our eating habits. And then going again to, to the story again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said what? That you can eat and you can drink, but do what? Do not cause corruption in the earth. What was this? When Bani Israel were provided with man and salwa, they were ordered. Wala taqsaw fil ardi muftadeen. Was what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them that you will be blessed with man and salwa. Daily, every day, enough for your needs. But they were stopped for doing certain things while consuming this man and salwa. They were stopped for collecting more, taking and collecting more than their own requirement and own share. Take as much as you want, eat as much as you want, 
and don't collect and gather more than what you need or what you want, number one. Secondly, don't snatch from the weak. Thirdly, they were ordered not to collect and hoard it. But these people of Bani Israel, as we can keep on gathering from the story, they were disobedient, always disobedient. You know what they did here? The people, amongst the people of Bani Israel, the young men, the strong, young, youthful men, they used to do what? They used to snatch and gather the man and salva much, much more and beyond their needs and requirements. And they used to actually snatch the share of the women and the children and the old and the sick, leaving them deprived and leaving them hungry. And when the hungry and the deprived used to ask them, they used to keep on asking and begging. But these hard-hearted, selfish, cruel snatchers, they used to hoard it up and they used to stock it down and they did not allow them to take this food. And the food used to rot and used to go bad. And the next day they used to throw it away. But their selfishness did not allow them to let the hungry eat. So this is what they were stopped and this is how they behaved. And you know why? Why they were stopped to take only their share and not to hoard it? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to train them. The preachers, the teachers of the teachings of Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, those who were, who were intended to be the protectors and the implementers of the Islam, they were being trained and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to train them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted that they should learn how to be selfless. They should learn sharing and caring. They should, they should learn to rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They, they should learn reliance on Allah. And they should learn to take out the love of world. And they should be able to scratch out all forms of lust of this world and greediness and selfishness, they should take it out of their mannerism. But they did not, they did not receive the training and they were selfish and they were greedy and they were lustful and they did not share and they did not care and they were hard hearted and they were harsh and they had the love of the world. And moreover, they had no reliance and tawakkul on Allah. So what was desired for their training, they still were deprived despite receiving the blessings and the bounties of Allah. Their behavior was totally against what they were needed and desired to behave like. And the nation of Bani Israel was a group of disobedient people. They were stubborn, they were obstinate, they were selfish, they were greedy, they were lustful. And then they were punished. Allahumma la taj'alla minhum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, help us all, protect us all, save us all from stubbornness and obstinacy, from disobedience and transgression, from selfishness and greediness, from lust of money and the lust of the worldly desires. Allah help us to be selfless to be caring, to be sharing, to be obedient. Rabbana, la tuzi' qulubana, bada is hadaitana, wahablana, milatun karwahma, innaka antal wahab. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika, nashhaduan la ilaha illa anta nastakbiruka wa natubu alayk. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun, wa salamun ala al mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ameen Sumabi